Good evening. No applause necessary. Welcome to Allowed at the Central Library, which is produced by the Library Foundation of Los Angeles. I'm Louise Steinman, the Cultural Programs Director for the Library Foundation. I'm delighted to see you all here tonight to hear Masha Gessen and Susie Weissman in conversation. If you're not already a member of the Library Foundation supporting the Los Angeles Public Library, please talk to one of our staff members afterwards and we will tell you about the great work of the Library Foundation supporting the mission of the LA Public Library, free access to ideas and information. And if you're interested in becoming a member tonight, we can gift you with a book by an allowed author. We have some of Masha's books as well, so please talk to us about that. We would love to have you join the community supporting this great institution. Our format tonight is a conversation, and after the conversation, we are going to open to you for questions or some questions. Please make them questions. That would be great. Um, and we will circulate microphones as we do record for podcast. As you can see, C-SPAN is here tonight, um, so you will see yourselves again in the future. And afterwards, both of our authors will be signing their books in the lobby, courtesy of our library store. Tonight, we welcome Masha Gessen, and as I said, with Susie Weissman. Masha Gessen is a pioneering Russian journalist who has bravely, and I mean really bravely, chronicled her country's tradition of dissidents from the Russian Revolution into the present movement. Doesn't mean she was living in the Russian Revolution, but her work covers often that span of time. She was born in Moscow and came to the United States when she was 14. And 10 years later, she returned to Russia, where she became a prominent journalist covering the war in Chechnya, as well as becoming an outspoken advocate for LGBT rights. Writing in both Russian and English, she has covered every major development in Russian politics and culture of the past two decades, receiving numerous awards and fellowships in the process. She blogs weekly for the New York Times, she has written for numerous publications, and has also edited several Russian magazines. Recently, she has relocated back to the United States. She is the author of many books, among them the bestseller Perfect Rigor, a genius and the mathematical breakthrough of the century. Masha also knows her math. A biography of a brilliant, young, eccentric Russian mathematician who solved the famous Poincaré conjecture in 2006. There is her memoir, Esther and Ruzia, How My Grandmothers Survived Hitler's War and Stalin's Peace. Though it's a memoir, it reads like a novel, and it offers a brilliant vision of Russian history from Stalinism through the fall of communism. In Man Without a Face, The Unlikely Rise of Vladimir Putin, the book that precedes her new book on Pussy Riot, she shows English-speaking readers how Putin became Putin, the story behind that man without a shirt, riding a horse, and leading Russia into a dark future. It reads like a thriller, but it is scarily true. Her newest book, which you'll discuss tonight with Susie Weissman, is Words Will Break Cement, The Passion of Pussy Riot. Masha Gessen is the perfect guide to lead us through the arrest, trial, and imprisonment of the three Pussy Riot members who were sentenced in Russia to two years in a penal colony for the charge of hooliganism, and who, since their release, have become human rights activists on the world stage. Putin's nightmare. Gessen takes us behind the scenes to help us understand the forces that transformed a group of young women into artists with a shared vision and, as Gessen wrote of her own grandmothers, with burden of a conscience. As Maria Alyokina, one of the three Pussy Riot activists, bravely reminded the court during her final statement, quote, all you can do is take away my so-called freedom, the only sort that exists in the Russian Federation, but no one can take away my inner freedom. Susie Weissman is a professor of politics at St. Mary's College of California. You probably know her from her weekly broadcast of Beneath the Surface with Susie Weissman on KPFK Los Angeles. She serves on the editorial boards of Critique and Against the Current and is the author of Victor Serge, The Course Set on Hope, and the editor of Victor Serge, Russia 20 Years After and the Ideas of Victor Serge. Please join me in welcoming Masha Gessen and Susie Weissman to the LA Public Library. Thank you all for coming. It's so nice to see a big crowd, and I'm sure a lot of you have uh, a lot of good questions to ask Marsha Gessen. We're very lucky to have her with us here tonight. 
And um, I wanted to uh, just start with a little bit of the clip that we have. That's the second clip. Can we push that up, pull it up? hard to imagine what an impact those 40 seconds had. We're going to come back to that while we talk to Marsha Gessen. Thanks for coming here tonight. Thank you for having me. And this book, which, as Louise said, uh, is going to be available afterwards. What um, Words will break cement. It comes from a poem. Um, Actually, it comes from Nadia's closing statement in court. And in that, she's quoting Solzhenitsyn. That's so not, not, not a poem, prose, but... Okay, and um, thank you. And um, but the publication of the book was accelerated because uh, just before uh, the Sochi Games, uh, Putin gave amnesty to Katya and Nadia. Uh, Na and Nadia and Maria. I'm sorry, Nadia and <laughs> Maria. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> After they had already served 650 days in jail, and um, as punishment for uh, essentially that 40 seconds. Uh, of a performance that really was truncated. And we're going to talk a lot about what went behind that, what their influences were, and everything else. So maybe we should start with um, what caused the Pussy Riot to form. Uh, earlier, we were going to look at a clip, but decided not to, about uh, showing uh, the President Medvedev announcing with Putin that they were going to essentially swap jobs and that Putin would then become president. What happened? For the third time. For the third time. What happened after that? Uh, well, there, there actually isn't a direct relationship between those two events. Um, the people, a lot of people in Russia felt absolutely despondent when Putin and Medvedev came out uh, during a Congress of the, uh, of, the, of the ruling United Russia Party. And in something that was extremely reminiscent of the Soviet Party Congresses, they sort of said, okay, we have decided that you all should support Putin for president. <laughs> and, um, uh, and then you know, there was thunderous applause of tens of thousands of hands. Uh, and it was decided that Putin was president, even though there, was, there had been no election. And then there was a parliamentary election in December, so three months later. It was a sham election, just like every election before it had been for years. Uh, and then there would be another election that was the presidential election. And right after the parliamentary election, the Russian protest movement that I'm sure everybody knows about broke out. Broke out quite suddenly for everyone else. But Pussy Riot at that point already ex had already existed for a couple of months. It was born as a fiction. It was born uh, when Nadia, who was a philosophy student at Moscow University, 21 years old, uh, and had participated in another protest art group called Vaina, she was asked to speak at a conference of opposition activists. And mostly this was because there were so few opposition activists that when one of the opposition activists um, noticed somebody else who was kind of charismatic and uh, participating in these tiny little opposition events that were happening, they would sort of sometimes try to, to draw them in. So Nadia was asked to give a presentation she decided she was going to give a presentation on feminist art. And because she was very taken with it, she was reading about uh, all this radical feminist art in the West. And so she put together what could really be a freshman course on feminist art. Uh, but freshman courses in feminist art are not taught in Russia. So she sort of put it all together in, a, in an hour and a half long uh, presentation. But there was a problem with the presentation, which was that there were no Russian artists. And there was one. But the one is not enough, and she was very commercial, and she'd been working for a long time. And Nadia felt she needed to finish with a Russian artist. I mean, otherwise, it was kind of wrong at an opposition activist conference to talk about Western artists all the time. So she made one up. She, she, 
She made up a group called Peace Riot. 